Right, so what we have here is the battle of the mid-range smartphone snappers. Asus's Zenfone 5, Nokia 7 Plus and Huawei's P20 Lite all boast a dual lens camera, surprise surprise, but that's more or less where the similarities end. For instance, the Zenfone 5 shooter uses a 12 megapixel f1.8 primary lens with OIS built in, as well as an 8 megapixel f2.0 secondary lens with a wide angle view of the world, and you can swap between the two at any point. The Nokia 7 Plus also uses a 12 megapixel f1.8 primary lens, although there's no OIS built in, and this time there's a 13 megapixel secondary lens, this time with a 2x optical zoom, and again you can swap between the two at any point to get a different view of the world. Lastly, the Huawei P20 Lite offers a 16 megapixel f2.2 primary lens, again without that OIS, while the secondary shooter is a very basic 2 megapixel lens that's basically just used for depth sensing. So first up, how good are these three at actually shooting your no doubt endlessly exciting everyday existence? Well in all three cases, the autofocus is reassuringly quick to react to your subject, even when they're in motion. As far as detail levels go, there are no worries there. Every handset here is capable of producing gorgeous, sharp looking pics. However, the Zenfone 5 and the Nokia 7 Plus tend to capture quite natural looking colours, while the Huawei P20 Lite has a habit of artificially enhancing those colours at times to really make them pop. Whichever method you prefer will of course be down to your personal tastes though. Bright scenes such as outdoor vistas taken in strong sunlight are often slightly overexposed by the Zenfone 5 with its primary lens, so you'll notice that some colours appear a little bit paler than they are in real life. In these situations, we actually found that swapping to that secondary wide angle lens really helped. The resultant photos are much more realistic with proper texture and depth. Conversely, in HDR situations, the Zenfone actually performs the best in this group. It's less put off by those brighter areas, which means you get plenty of detail in the rest of the photo. The 7 Plus really isn't that far behind though, it still performs very very well in those high contrast scenes. And fortunately, the P20 Lite results are usually much darker and detail is tougher to pick up. When it comes to those low light shots, the Zenfone is again our pick of the bunch. You generally get bright, clear results and colours don't take too much of a hit. The Nokia 7 Plus results actually vary quite a bit. It often also produces quite bright results with limited grain, although occasionally those colours do look a bit artificial. At other times, the results were significantly darker than those captured by the Zenfone, and bugger me if I can work out why. Meanwhile, the P20 Lite was generally quite consistent and that the photos it produced were murky and grainy and basically not very nice to look at. And when things get really dark, the P20 Lite gives up on life entirely, while the Zenfone once again produces impressively detailed results. So what about that dual lens functionality? Well, as mentioned, that wide angle lens on the Zenfone offers a very different view of the world. In sunny situations, it captures great looking snaps and it's a perfect way to snap a sweeping vista. Meanwhile, the Nokia 7 Plus' secondary snapper gives you a close up view of whatever you're shooting thanks to that 2 times optical zoom with no loss in detail. You don't get any bonus functionality with the P20 Lite's dual lens setup beyond the now standard portrait mode. This does a perfectly solid job of capturing your subject cleanly while blurring everything behind them for impressive Bokka style effects. You get similar mode on the Zenfone and the Nokia 7 Plus too, and again in both cases this works perfectly well. Occasionally you'll get a patchy result, but as long as the lighting conditions are alright, we're generally all good in the HUD. Of course, all three phones offer their own bonus camera modes too. The 7 Plus' most notable effort is the bothy mode, which essentially captures a snap using both the rear and the front camera at the same time. The Zenfone, meanwhile, can shoot quick GIFs, which is often very entertaining. However, the P20 Lite definitely wins the Oh My God So Many Camera Modes award. The highlight, however, is definitely the AR lens, which would give even well-adjusted human beings an endless dose of night terrors. All three of these phones also offer Pro Control, so you can manually tweak the likes of the white balance and get a very precise kind of shot. The Zenfone and the P20 Lite also allow you to shoot raw images, while the Zenfone boasts a histogram to make you feel like a proper pro. And what about video? Well, Huawei's handset is the most limited here. You can only shoot on a max resolution of full HD, and even then only at 30 frames per second. Meanwhile, the Nokia 7 Plus can handle 4K footage, and the Zenfone once again wins. You can shoot Full HD at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and bump all the way up to that Ultra HD resolution when needed. Home movies come out well in all three cases, although Nokia offers the best image stabilisation at Full HD level. Things are a wee bit bumpy on the Zenfone, and super shaky on the P20 Lite. At 4K level, it's a bit more even. The Zenfone is possibly even slightly less shakier than the Nokia 7 Plus, which really drops in performance. But still, detail levels are superb when shooting in Ultra HD with either of these blowers. So that in a nutshell is how these three smartphone snappers compare. Which one are you most tempted by? Do you own one of them? And what do you think of the general performance? Let us know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching everyone. Oh, and uh, don't forget to give us a subscribe. Don't forget to give us a subscribe, yeah? Cheers.